Afternoon, Cherries fans, and welcome to this latest show here on Up the Cherries in All Departments. Now, before I welcome on my special guest, here's a little bit about our sponsors, Dental on the Banks. To find out what they can do for you, visit dentalonthebanks.co.uk. Now, following our victory against Leicester on Saturday, we take a trip to a team that we know quite well now, Fulham at Craven Cottage. To preview the game, it is a pleasure to welcome back onto Up the Cherries in All Departments, Steve Lydiard. Afternoon, Steve. How are you, mate? Evening, Craig. All good. Yourself? Yeah, um... very, very well. <laughs> the office but good to take the time out to actually catch up and talk a bit of football before the weekend yeah definitely definitely and of course we're both not doing too badly in the Premier League a lot better than Nottingham Forest anyway yeah I'm actually surprised I'll be honest with you the way we started a bit like a train um compared to what we all thought thought we would and probably even Fulham fans thought we would I'm a little bit surprised and maybe I don't mean a horrible way, but disappointed that you've managed to sort of catch us up. You know, sort of you didn't have the sort of spectacular start as we did, but now you're sitting above us. I think you might have played a game more, or I could be incorrect, but you're you're, you're sitting above us. So I'm a little bit disappointed that you, you seem to have caught us already. <laughs> well, we have played the same amount of games, so we've both played nine, mm. but um, we are a point above at the moment, but I think a lot of that has to play down to Mitrovic as well, who, let's be fair, this time round has taken to the Premier League a lot better. Yeah, we, I mean, we, we chatted on this show and I've, I've chatted on other shows. You know where I'm going with that. We chat the exact reason why Mitrovic has or hasn't performed previously. Um, well, everyone's saying he hasn't. And now it appears that every every pundit in the world is now jumping on the same thing that us guys have been saying for when you look deeper as to the reason why he wasn't performing and why he is now. It makes absolute perfect sense. But it's uh, again, it's nice that the pundits took their time after a few years to actually look into it. <laughs> exactly, mate. And one of those reasons is our former manager now and Fulham's former manager, Scott Parker. We did warn you, the classic Fulham fans, we did warn you. It's all over social media. We did warn you and eventually the Bournemouth fans started to uh, to cut. I don't know if yourself did, but a lot yeah, a lot of fans turning and sort of saying, oh, we see exactly what you mean now. I could see it popping up everywhere. So I was just like, yeah, you know, um, not to say he's a far better manager than I would ever, ever be. But for him, for him and his level, he wasn't good enough. No, I completely agree. And I think after that 9-0 defeat, which we did stand off too far off from Liverpool, we gave him too much respect. The comments he came out with afterwards were ridiculous. But my view of him was in the middle of last season was I can understand what Fulham fans were saying all along. And then he picked up. He seemed to have that plan B. But Against three of the best teams in the country, you know, Man City, you know, we, we did well. We did did all right against them. Yes, we still got beat and still got beat 4-0. But at the same time, you half expect that. Against Arsenal, though, two goals, first 10 minutes, a bit unacceptable. 
Um, he may not manage to steady it, but against Liverpool, let's be honest, it was just a bit ridiculous, wasn't it? Well, at least, at least we weren't facing an informed Mo Salah after uh, last night's Champions League exploits. Was it, <laughs> I think, six, and a, six minutes, 20 second um, hat trick or something? So, yeah. <laughs> count our blessings, we weren't on the receiving end of that in our... Uh, well, yeah, well, you obviously were. Um, yeah. to a level, uh, but anything like last night in your game, I mean, it'd probably been double figures. Well, exactly. And Salah did miss a couple of golden opportunities, really, during mm-hmm. that match. Um, but we still hold the record for the fastest <laughs> hat trick in English football. So we've still got that. And of course, we did interview him fairly recently as well, James Hayter. Um, but Fulham season, you know, it's it's. You've done well. It's been a little bit mixed. Um, there was the 4-1 defeat, or should I say, um, fairly difficult game against Newcastle. You were down to 10 men, though, in that match. You know, what did you make of that? Um, first up, I saw, I saw the lineup, and I saw... Um, so, actually, that day, I'll be honest with you, I didn't actually get to watch any of the game and the highlights until later in the evening. Um, when I'd A, calmed down, but B, I was actually out off that day um, at Thor Park with the family and the kids. Um, but I got a flash through on six minutes saying uh, um, Shalabar had got sent off. And I, I literally turned around to um, one of my family members, also a Fulham fan. I said, have you seen that? Six minutes. I said, game over. I said, absolutely mm. game over. And then, of course, you start seeing one, one flash through, two flash through three, four. I was waiting for a fifth and then I saw we got one towards the end. I was like, oh, we scored a goal. I was like, <laughs> <That's> <laughs> a uh, again, I wasn't exactly excited at the moment because I was, I was still fuming about the red card earlier on and I actually hadn't seen the tackle. I could just see everyone absolutely going mental on social media. What a stupid thing to do. Um, and then I did actually get to see a clip of it while I was waiting in a queue uh, mm. for a ride. And then I was like, this is ridiculous. I was like, what have you done? Um, so yeah, um, I mean, game was over. Let's be honest, game was over after after five six minutes. You know, Newcastle A started like a train, and B once you get the red card, there's only going to be one outcome from that game. Um, and I don't, I still don't think it touches back. I still don't. It's great that we're scoring goals, and that's why we've had such a good start. But if you look at the amount we're conceding, we're still arguably you could say we're conceding enough goals to get relegated. Mm. It's just goals that we're scoring up the other end in apart from the last couple of games, is keeping us out. But we can't be conceding with the greatest of respect for whatever reason, and there were reasons, we can't be conceding three goals against West Ham and expect to get anything out of the game. Four goals against Newcastle, expect to get anything out of the game. Um, it, it can't happen. It can't keep happening. We have conceded two more goals than yourselves, but of course we can put that down to that horrible day in Liverpool. Yeah, yeah. But to be fair, we are delighted with the season so far since that point because being eighth in the Premier League, um, Gary O'Neill coming in, doing a fantastic job, unbeaten in five. Does that concern Fulham fans? Um, I don't think it concerns us. I think what concerns us more, and I think you'll appreciate is the way we started the season with our, with our full you know, what would be our first team. We mm-hmm. went into Liverpool games since then. We, you know, take away the Newcastle and the West Ham games. We've actually started like a, like a house on fire. So if you were to ignore the Newcastle West Ham games, full strength team, and no disrespect to the way you guys have started, I think even you guys might turn and say, we might expect Fulham to pick up a win here. Um, and that would be maybe what I'd be expecting this weekend if we have a fit, you know, sort of Polinia's back, he's not suspended after accumulating... Mm-hmm. X amount of cars through celebrating yeah. with the fans. Um, Mitrovic hopefully recovered enough or recovered from his ankle injury now. I think it was his ankle, but from yeah. his injury um, this past week. Um, Harry Wilson's back now. So hopefully, if we can get those far in again this week, um, I think, I'm not sure your thoughts, I think we might be too much to handle, you know, by, by a goal or two for you guys at the weekend. But again, you know, we, we might not rediscover that this weekend. So because of the momentum, you know, the momentum shift that you guys are sitting above. In, in essence, it's, our, it's who wants the game more. If you guys want the game more than us this weekend, well, then there'll be one result. I think the 
difficult thing is, of course, if this was at Dean Court, you know, I'd be full of confidence. Um, Mitrovic looks like he's going to probably be out for this match, um, which, you know, hopefully, fingers crossed, he'll be back soon, far in for Fulham. But, um, you know, to be honest, that's a little bit of a blessing in disguise for us. Um, but at the same time, Craven Cottage is never an easy place to go. Unless unless we get a red card in the first few minutes. <laughs> that, very true. Very, very true. Um, but you have had some really, really decent results as well. Um, mm. Of course, you know, you beat Brighton, you know, which mm. is no mean feat. Um, the Brentford game was, you know, I saw quite a lot of that. And that was a fantastic performance um, against a team which are tough. Um, Mm. We couldn't break them down. You managed to score three against them. So you've definitely got goals in the side. Um, How much of that would you say is down to Mitrovic when he plays? Because it has dried up slightly, hasn't it? Um, I know you beat Forest 3-2, but it has dried up in the last two. Managed to get one against West Ham, one against Newcastle. Mm. What's your what's your theory on that? Yeah, I think it's, it's bang on. It's, it's, it's coincided with the absences of Paulinho and Mitrovic. Now, obviously, Paulinho was absent for a game, um, came back. Um, then Mitrovic was still injured. And obviously, Paulinho's are just coming back into the side. So, again, I, th- I think a lot of it is down to the core of our side. Now, we know the, the holding side. Polina, we've got, you know, everyone know, knows in the Premier League about Polina now. Everyone knows about Mitrovic in the Premier League. Everyone knows about Leno in the Premier League. But mm. we still haven't got, for me, we still haven't got a core as centre-back. And also the, the full-backs, you know, sort of, uh, we've had an issue with those the last, the last couple of games, underperforming or just not performing. Um, and that is exposing that centre-back, centre-back pair and even more. Tim Ream surprised me. Um, but I still think you look at the players that we were linked with in the summer, like uh, Romagnoli, who's gone to, I think he went to Lazio, um, yeah. to the club. I mean, I saw a couple of weeks ago, he's scoring for them, you know, he's chipping in with a goal here and there. He's, he's staying injury free. If we'd have got a player like that through the door, um, you know, I think everyone could probably agree in the Premier League that we would be much stronger unit at the back. And I think we have, we've got maybe three of the four pieces of the core sorted. So, the, you know, the midfield, up front, when when fit, and in goal. But we don't have the defence quite sorted. And I think that's been reflective when we're, when we're lacking the attacking edge, you know, lacking the, um, lacking the goals up top. Of course, you know, being in the position that we both are, I think, you know, at the start of the season, we probably would have taken that, wouldn't we? Yeah, definitely, definitely yeah. Yeah. But I mean, yeah. The aim is still the aim for us guys. Both is seventeenth, or if we yeah. if we want to trade sixteenth and seventeenth, great. But after the start we've had and knowing that what and I think knowing what our teams can do with our with our full squads now, mm. that you guys can survive and maybe even do better. We can definitely survive and maybe do better. You know, both around sort of mid table or lower. You know, so towards the bottom of the lower half. Um, but the problem comes for both of us, I think when we have key players out, especially as you've seen with Fulham, you know, you're kind of steady Eddie at the moment. We really, really struggle when we're missing those key players. Um, and it's only going to take a long-term injury to Mitrovic, Palina, Leno, or even one of the centre-backs that we do have at the moment. Uh, we are in massive, massive trouble, especially if we can't, you know, get anyone through the door in January. Of course, Fulham, you know, are, you know, who. Won the prem, uh, well, won the championship, I should say. Won the Premier mm. League. That would be nice, wouldn't it? You know, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> do a Leicester. <laughs> but um, of course, won the championship last season. You know, has the side differed much in terms of personnel? I think I think the personnel. You can see that there, there's clearly new personnel in there. Um, I don't think. It's hard. There will be a lot of people that sort of do a podcast. You know, more in depth. No a lot, you know, focus on different tactics of the game and stuff like that. I don't think our style of play hasn't really changed too much. Yes, it's adapted slightly. Um, The personnel, again, we've kept, this time around, we've kept a lot of the same personnel. We've added to it. So straight away, you see the likes of Polina coming straight in. Massive difference. Um, I think I saw someone say, if he stays with us past this season, you know, it would be 
it would be sorry to see him go, but if he stays doesn't stay with us past this season, I think we're going to get a lot of money for him and he's going to get a move that he thoroughly deserves and he would go with our blessing. Um, so again, I think, yeah, some personnel has changed, but we've kept, we've kept the same. You know, Harry Wilson, when he's fit, is probably going to be in the starting lineup. Mitrovic, when he's fit, obviously, as we know, starting lineup, two from the championship straight away. Cabano's been stepping up in the Premier League this year. Harrison Reed, you know, these are all guys, Adarabaya, Reem, they're all guys that were playing in the championship. We just added maybe three or four key players, Leno, Paulinha, um, if you like, and on, you know, Mitrovic doing it in the Premiership that we've added. Um, Solomon has been injured. We haven't seen much of him. Mana Solomon, but I think he'll be a he'll be a player when he comes back. So again, you know, not too many first team new faces, as in that you could call starters, but they've made a real impact, a real difference. Would you say as well? I'm just it's just come to mind. Would you say that that is the core reason why Fulham and Bournemouth are doing so well, and Forest are struggling because they've had you know so many changes. They bought practically two new teams. And whereas we've kept it very much the same, but of course, the last time you was up, you did make quite a lot of signings, didn't you? I, th- I think it's the same. I think it's relatable to an element in any league you play. So whether you play five-a-side football, whether you play 11-a-side football at grassroots, or whether you play at the top level, if you play in it week in, week out with the same players for an X amount of time, invariably you should and probably will be a better team. You might not have the better players, but you'll be a better team and able to get out results. And you will, between chucking, say, the 11 best players in the world out in a team, haven't got a clue how each other plays, who's good at what. Invariably you'll find, yeah, it might work because they're the greatest, but you find the big teams struggle. Just because you have money doesn't mean you can look at Manchester United. They spent money on, on players that individually quality. Together, okay, they might start slowly finding their feet, but together they're they're not they're not a unit, you know. And would you say would you want to if you put out a Fulham Fulham or Bournemouth against United tomorrow, would you be a hundred percent convinced United would win that game? I'd probably be disappointed if we didn't get a draw. So yeah. with our with our with our full team um, at the cottage. So again, you, do you see where I'm going with that? It, yes, it, dep- yeah. <laughs> it depends on many factors. And our sides have both been fixed for quite a period of time. You know, the Bournemouth team, we haven't made masses of signings. Of course, Neto's come in for Travers. We've had Tavernier, who's played instead of Anthony majority of the time. But, you know, it's not a wholesale changes like Nottingham Forest. And we've both beaten them. Yeah, and it's, it's a problem. I mean, Forest, you can see that Forest have got some good players there. Yeah. Um, but there's, there's, and I liked, um, for example, Nico Williams when he was at Fulham. But as soon as you look at the amount that Forrest paid, I think it was 17 million for for Nico Williams. You know, we, we were never going to match that because as as great as we liked him, he wasn't defensively or he wasn't the all-round unit that you would want to be paying that sort of money for. Um, hindsight's a wonderful thing. I'd have probably paid that now instead of paying, what was it, seven or eight million for Mbappé. Um, yeah. But <laughs> time, at the time, you would have said, well, paying half the cost for Mbabu was actually probably a good deal. Um, hindsight's a wonderful thing. But again, they spent money on players with the potential. But you can't, you can't gel two football teams into one football team overnight. It's, it's going to take the best part of a half a season, maybe, maybe even a full season before they gel. So if they can somehow scrape 17th place by the end of the season, odds are that Forrest could do all right next season. But I don't think anyone can find three teams at the moment. I'm struggling to find three teams that will definitely be in the bottom three at the moment, you know, because yeah. you can see potentially us us being down there because of the way teams were falling. Leicester, you can't see them down there, but at the moment they are. Villa, teams like that, you know, people say, oh, they're too good to go down. Yeah, but are they? You know, Villa coming to the cottage in, in a week's time. Um I would be expecting three points at home to Villa. No disrespect, just how they're playing at the moment and where everyone is in the league. Do you see what I mean? So Leicester coming yeah. to the cottage, I would be expecting three points. Um, that's not being disrespectful. That's just how the teams are, bar our last two games. 
performing. So, um, but again, you'd say they were too good to go down, both of those teams. But but yet someone's got to fill them. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I think it's going to be an exciting game. Um, I think both teams know each other well. And like I say, Mitrovic being out is quite a positive. You know, hopefully he won't be out for long. <laughs> you know, he, you know, he's a quality player. Um, and uh, well, when he's not with Scott Parker, let's be honest. But <laughs> um, <laughs> but how do you see it going? Um, I, wa- I worry for us if we don't have a Mitrovic at the weekend. Um because last time out, and yeah, they were difficult games for different reasons. You know, Newcastle, um, Mitch was a bit injured. Last time out, um, he wasn't in for West Ham. Different reasons. We can, can, can we could complain, we could argue. Decisions weren't given, were given correct. Whichever under law, whichever it was, ultimately those decisions occurred. Um, yeah. But we still didn't look. We still got to take our chance. You know, Dan James scores that. The, the shot that hits the bar, and I think even David Moy said, we score that one, it's a different game. The fact that we hit the bar rejuvenates his team. They're only 1-0 down. I think we go 2-0 up at West Ham. I think the game's finished. I think I think yeah. maybe we get third. Maybe it finishes 3-1 to us. But, that you know, that's not how football works sometimes. Um, I, th- I think we might struggle against you without, a Mit- without Mitrovic because at the moment we are not got anyone that's showing signs of being able to score maybe more than chipping in with a goal here or there. Uh, that's what concerns me. Vinicius, I still quite like the guy, um, but he didn't really do a lot in the last game for us. Um, so again, where do we go? I would probably be happy to escape. Still feel we should have enough to get Nick a win off you at home. But again, I would argue if we come out of that with a draw, then I would be happy with a draw. Um, but I wouldn't want to lose. Still without Mitrovic, I wouldn't want to lose that game. Yeah. No, fair enough. I'm not going to bet against my own team. I think we can <laughs> nick it. You know, you probably knew that I was going to say that. But yeah, I yeah. think it's going to be a tough, tough game. And, you know, Fulham will know what we're all about. Because, of course, we went up together last season. Um, two draws last season. Um, and you're a quality side. And I'm sure that you want to hopefully get third time lucky very much like we do. Um, but it's, I guess it's going to be a bit more difficult because it's at Craven Cottage. I would say, well, you know, this is the sort of game that we need to win, you know, if we plan to stay in the Premier League. But, you know, away from home, every point is, you know, what you're looking for, isn't it? I, th- I think for you guys, I mean, you should, let's say, uh, let's say you looked at it after the two games, let's say you get a point at the Cottage at the weekend under whatever circumstances you get a point at the weekend um, and you were to pick up three points of us at, at your place. You've you've picked up more points over the two games on the head-to-head than we have. So straight away, on on that front, you, you're onto a winner. Um, and that's ideally where we want to be, picking up four points or six points from you guys. So yeah. as we know, it's the teams that you think are going to be around you. So so let's go. I know we, we both started right, but let's say we're all down the bottom. Leicester, West Ham, you guys, us, Forest. These are the games that are going to matter come the end of the season. So regardless of where we are now, it's what it's what us guys do on Saturday. It's who picks up the points Saturday, who gets any points, at, for example. It is going to make a difference come the end of the year. It might be that Bournemouth end up finishing mid-table and we finish finish halfway up, you know, the lower half. Or it might mean one of us fin- finishes in Europe, the other finishes mid-table. The league could be that tight, you know, within a few points this year, as we've already seen. A win can both boost you right up the table. You guys, you won your last game, we lost. It's boosted you right up the table. It's put you above us. So, at the moment, it's getting really tight. Um, all across the board, really, in the sort of lower lower half, you know, mid to lower half. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Well, thank you so much for coming on again, Steve. It is been an absolute pleasure to have you back on the show and of course you were the Fulham fan for our Harry Redknapp interview as well weren't you <laughs> yeah I saw that yeah um, I yeah. wasn't sure what Harry said about us but uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's an honest man that's what I've always got 
from his um, from everything you watch about him, you know, on TV, the pundit, he is just himself, basically. He is what he is. He says it as it is. He Even he admits he doesn't always get things right or people won't agree with him. But at least he's honest and he's true to himself. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Well, thank you so much for coming on again, mate. And all the very, very best after, of course, Saturday. Yeah, no, don't wish you all the best for Saturday, but I know what you mean. For the rest of the season, if we're yeah. both sitting here in the Premier League next year, fantastic. Yeah, most definitely. Yeah, cheers for coming on, Steve. Take it easy. Enjoy the rest of your day, everyone. Cheers. And thank you, everybody, for joining me on this show. Please do remember to hit the like, the subscribe and the bell button below to be alerted to any new videos we do here on the channel. Please do also remember to watch our interviews. We have had, of course, Harry Redknapp. We had the season preview with him, so do listen to his thoughts. Also, we've had recently James Hayter, the scorer of the quickest hat-trick in fo English football. We've also had Lee Bradbury and many, many more. We should also be doing a raw reaction video after the game as well. So please do keep peel your eyes peeled for that. But until the next video, up the cherries and I'll see you then. Thank you for joining us. <music>